Thank you. And Hi, Margaret. Okay. Would you prefer I call you Margaret or Miss Margaret? Margaret. Oh, okay. Great. Well, welcome. And Thank I you. want to hear from you. What has brought you in today? Well, um, my I saw my doctor about uh, ten days ago or so, and um, he told me I have a diagnosis of pre-diabetes. Okay. So uh, we talked about my steady weight gain over the past 15 years and how I have a lot of a positive family history for some things and, and that it was important for me to start thinking about making some changes um, in my weight and so I'm not sure where to start even so he said this would be helpful. All right so this was some new information and how it maybe a little bit surprising even though there was a family history of some issues um, to hear those words pre-diabetes. Yeah, I mean, you guess you always think you're going to dodge the bullet. You know, you're not. It's not going to happen to them, but it's not going to happen to to you. And then all of a sudden, now um, my mom has, she's overweight. My sister's overweight. They both have trouble with their knees. My mom has high blood pressure. My dad has had a rough time. He, um, he's has type 2 diabetes, and um, because of that, now he's on dialysis, which is a miserable way to live, um, and he's also had an amputation so, of one leg, and so it's just, uh, I was hoping that I wouldn't go down that path, but here I am. <laughs> So you've seen some of these real devastating consequences of weight, and it ranges from high blood pressure, which you don't always see, to the real obvious loss of a limb in your father. And those things are terrifying to then have to be in that position where you are now getting similar news. Right, exactly. I'm, I'm a little disturbed by it. But, um, you know, that's, that's why I'm here. I, I, I have concerns about my weight, and, and I've uh, even heard of that, you know, in the commercials, though, there'll be people who have lost a lot of weight, even though they were, maybe they were even on medication for type 2 diabetes, and then all of a sudden, they're healthy, they don't have, they're not, I mean, a weight, what is that, uh, Weight what not Weight Watchers show, but the show where, where they all have that massive weight loss and they show that the biggest yeah. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't think of that. But you know, there'll be people that will have been on all these medications and then they're off all their medications, and so that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, so it sounds like you've got a lot of optimism with some of the examples that you see in the media that you have a chance here to change course from the consequences. I hope so. And I think that that optimism is something that we're going to want to keep in mind as we're talking through some of the things that you think might be logical first steps mm -hmm. in this path for you. Um, you've mentioned a couple times medications, and I'm curious for you, are you currently on any medications, and has your doctor talked to you about that possibility? Well, I just know my dad has to okay. be on a bunch of stuff, and I'd rather not. Okay. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm, right now I'm healthy, and I don't take any medications. Um, I, you know, I, I don't want to. So avoiding those medications might be another one of those big factors for um, kind of making those changes that you might need. So we've got kind of the real scenarios that you've seen in your own family with your sister and your mom and their knee problems, the loss of limb that your dad has had and that dialysis. Um, what are some of the other things that you think are um, going to be important as you're thinking about weighing the changes that you might need to make? Meaning like what kind of things are important? Oh, um, you mean to, you mean real things or? So I'm thinking of kind of tangible things right now that you see as potentially barriers or obstacles to making a change in your weight? 
Well, the doctor talked a little bit about exercise, but I told him that I'm a little not so ready to tip over that stone yet because I've been having a lot of trouble with my knee. I don't, I mean, my mom has arthritis, my mm -hmm. sister does. I don't know if that's what's going on. Um, he said if it still bothers, we could take an x-ray, but it's, it's just that when I get, if I walk a far distance, my knee will start to hurt. I'm also noticing some shortness of breath when I um, am really, you know, like doing some harder work. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm a little worried about those things, and I want to maybe lose a little weight before I take on much exercise. He seemed to say, I, I felt like he was in agreement with that. So um, we thought maybe dietary changes okay. might be more in order because I've really not been doing that good on my diet. So what kinds of things have you noticed in your diet that you think are potential opportunities to make either some improvements or to cut out some things? But there's lots. Okay. On both sides of that. Okay. Um, adding and taking away. Um, oh, about about six or seven years ago, my husband and I started having some, some troubles, and we were divorced five years ago. Okay. I went back to work full time after having about seven or eight years off um, from work, uh, where I was a housewife and uh -huh. I was doing all of the things at home that needed to be done, including meal planning and so forth. We we did really pretty well then. And then when this happened, my life just sure. changed. Sure. Now I don't have um, any time to myself, much less, you know, time to do things like extensive meal planning mm -hmm. and coupon shopping and so forth. So I find that my um, two teenage kids and I, um, uh, when I pick them up from school, we make a beeline for any fast food right. and fill up and that's dinner. <laughs> it's not it's not choice. It really is not what I like to be doing. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately I'm too tired after working all day. Uh, I don't have the desire to stand up and chop vegetables and mm -hmm. um, cook and stare at the stove for an hour and then clean up for half you know. I just don't have the motivation to do that anymore. So I know I'm not making very good choices, but it's what I can do. Right. I stand in there and cook. My knee starts to bother. I want some face-to-face -face with my own kids every day. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's really been difficult. And so it sounds like with the divorce and the breakup with your husband, that really rocked your world and led to a lot of changes in the amount of free time you have to devote to eating the foods that you've identified as being more healthful and you want to spend quality time with your children and things are just so busy and they're teenagers and you guys are running non-stop and so right. a lot of the time the only option for you to get food in is to just get to the fastest place possible and um, eat right. there and then you've got some of the physical barriers to standing and that knee discomfort, but then just the time commitment for food preparation and then the cleanup on the back end is not something you look forward to. No. Try getting kids to clean up the dirty kitchen, that's not going to happen either. And I have a 14 year old and he is happy with anything, sure. he's really pleased to be going out for dinner. Um, like that. My daughter, though, on the other hand, she's been saying, you know, she's a little overweight. Mm -hmm. She's been, she's been confiding in me that it's starting to impact her a little bit. And so, I know that I've got to do a better job for them. Um, it's, it's not where I thought I would be. Sure. And um, so I think that there's been a little resistance on my part to change um, because. Instead of going to the store and saying, we need fruit, we need vegetables, I'm going, what's next? Can we fill up on after we've mm -hmm. been through the drive-thru? Or here's a frozen
here's a frozen pizza that's going to be easy to make, um, where I could be going um, in the different direction. And, and, it, and like I say, I, I, I've, I've just taken the easy way out. So in kind of your perfect food scenario, how would things look for you? How would you be able to involve your children? How would how would things change? In the perfect world? Yeah. <laughs> I'd have somebody preparing my food for me and it would all be healthy. That would be perfect. But that I'd have to win the lottery. <laughs> So, is yeah. there an element of reality <laughs> that you might be able to bring to the yeah, um, closer to perfect world than where you sit right now? I used to be just so planned out. I would have, I would have the food in the crock pot ready to go the next morning. You know, in the in the heat it up, and then we come home in the house and be all smelling mm -hmm. great. Or if I was out, or you know, we would have. A perfectly balanced, you know, dinner. Um, I, and while maybe that's not going to be what I strive for every day, right away, uh, it could be something I could do on the weekends. Maybe mm -hmm. um, I thought about it and thought, well, you know, maybe it's for the Friday night um, rush to the grocery store, pick up snack food. It's more of a controlled or planned mm -hmm. out thing where I buy what we're going to eat that's healthier on mm -hmm. the weekend. If I, if I even could start knocking a couple of nights off in the right direction, I think I'd feel pretty good about that. Yeah, and it sounds like that would be a really positive change to go maybe from seven nights a week of running to fast food down to six or five. And um, it also sounds like some of the timing of maybe your grocery shopping is a little bit, bit chaotic. Have you thought about different times in the week where it might be a little bit more relaxed for you or where you could do some of that pre-planning that you used to do? I could probably do pre-planning, but I'm so tired. Okay. Right? Monday through Friday. Uh, I'm lucky, really, I consider myself lucky if we swing by the store on Friday um, to get anything because I can't seem to, and like I say, it's all just grabbing snack food and frozen mm -hmm. foods, you know, mm -hmm. frozen pizza or frozen prepared meal, hot, you know, uh, pot pies or something fast, you know, whatever. Um, I just, I, I don't know if I can move my shopping day okay. as much as I could. Maybe make a list okay. of better options. So then just from what you've said so far, it sounds like making a list and doing some of that planning and trying to get one or two meals a week where you've got that wonderful aroma of a well-balanced meal in the crock pot when you come home from work might be a good um lift for you and if it's not happening during the week putting that on the weekend would probably fit a little bit more with the amount of fatigue that you're feeling and your daughter's had some interest in her it sounds like weight and perhaps rallying her into some of the cooking could offload the work and give you a little bit of time with her have you thought about that at all I don't know if she really wants to take any responsibility okay. for cooking. Um, although, if I talk to her about it, uh, you know, about a plan to mm -hmm. eat more healthy on the weekend, I think we could support each other okay. in that. Um, and maybe those would be the days that we put on some of the sweets instead of, you know, the sweets we've been. Mm -hmm. I mean, Along with the, with the frozen pizzas and, and that sort of thing, there's plenty of cookies and, and, and candy and things like that in the mix. So maybe even uh, we could team up and do something yeah. with them. Yeah, so, so it sounds like that. making that kind of a family effort might give some support to both you and your daughter right. as you're trying to improve your habits and start to make those little changes in your weight that will hopefully – Lighten the load for when you're trying to incorporate exercise in the future if you get to that point. But I know that that was something that both you and your doctor felt was best to hold off on right now. But just keeping that in the back of our minds as we kind of 
move forward um, will be something that we'll want to just revisit here and there. Okay. Alrighty. Sounds good. <laughs> I think it's a good place to say anything. Yeah.